say it's spirituality, but we have to define it because is it relating to the body, the mind, or the soul? Now, anything that's relating to the mind and the body is definitely material. Okay. But things that are related to the soul is spiritual. So many of us are confused as to what is really spiritual. That's true, because we consider things that are like psychology, which yes. deal with the mind, to be yes. a spiritual practice. Or, for example, yoga. Like in this day and age, they, they define yoga as like sitting in, in one place and, and, and either meditating, which should be that, but in a different way, meaning that you got to focus and meditate on the Supreme Lord sure. within the within the heart, who is called the Paramatma. And in this modern age, yoga actually means you are doing exercise. Yoga right. exercise. <laughs> I mean, you just so do an asana practice. So that's actually meant for the body, and it's not really pertaining to the soul. So you know, we draw the line there. Yeah. So that is why um, when people who are searching spiritually, they follow these paths. And they may take it up, but eventually they become frustrated mm. and disappointed and dissatisfied because they are not they are not getting what they're wanting, but they are looking in the wrong direction. Ah. So this is where Krishna consciousness comes about. It's, it's universal and it's eternal. It doesn't mean it's just for an Indian or it's for an Indian body. It means for every living entity within this human body. Mm. So as long as we have this human birth, it is meant for all of us. Wow. So therefore, you will find, you, you can see the, the diversity here, oh, yeah. but, but spiritually we are all one. Mm. And, and this is what brings us together. And so how did you get introduced to the Krishna Consciousness Movement? Oh right, you said while you were in school. When I was in school, we had some devotees come and they gave us a discourse and they freely distributed some literature. So for people that are interested in the Krishna Consciousness yes. Movement, what would be the one book that you would recommend them to start with? Wow, we have such a wide range of it. But uh, I would say the science of self-realization. It's it's like the, the ABC okay. of the spiritual life put into one in this book, wonderful, uh, most amazing book. Because if you read it, it makes so much of sense and it is so much of logic is in there that uh, there is no doubt, it doesn't leave room for any doubts. So therefore I said, when I read this book, it kind of explained so many things because like I said, I was searching spiritually and when I read this book, it like changed my life completely and totally. Mm. It was exactly what I was looking for. Wow, well maybe yeah. that might be the best book for me to start with. And you got to, you, when you are reading it, read it with an open mind and an understanding that this is something that is not of this material world. This knowledge is actually not coming from here. And this is what makes it so pure, because it is coming from the spiritual world. Sure. Now, for example, who can actually give us knowledge of the spiritual world? It is only the Son of God, right. isn't it? And even Jesus gave some bit of knowledge, but he didn't give a whole lot, because he said, in this day and age, people are not ready to accept what I have to give, but there will come a time when this knowledge will be imparted, and now is the time. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada is also the most beloved son of, of Krishna, oh, and wow. he is coming from the spiritual world, and only he can give knowledge of the Father, who is Krishna. Hmm. So therefore, the son who is living with the Father, only he can give you this kind of knowledge. And therefore, the knowledge that we have is so pure in its state. And when when one takes to this process, it's like no looking back. It's always going forward and reaching hmm. that goal. Wow. That goal means to reside eternally with one's father. Oh, it's wow. like a child moving away from home, but is desiring and yearning to reunite with the family again, oh, the parent. Wow. So this is what it's about. It's like Krishna, who's God, has sent his son to reclaim all of us, because we all are his children, to reclaim us and take us back home, back to Godhead. That is why we say back home, back to Godhead. And Godhead means the spiritual world. Oh, wow. This is where we all reside. Originally, we are all spiritual souls. And because due to um, defiance of the laws of God, we are in this material world and we are left to enjoy. Mm. And when we enjoy, we forget. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a child who is saying, oh, mommy, please, daddy, please give me um, 
some money, allowance. Please give me a house and a car and go. The parents say, okay, you want to be independent, go out and enjoy. So when the child enjoys and enjoys and enjoys, then they forget the parent. Yeah. So this is what has happened to us. We have forgotten our, our father, our beloved father. So when we want to enjoy, then the father will say, okay, here's a toy car, you can go and enjoy yourself. Or here's a house, you can enjoy yourself. So when we, when the enjoying propensity comes to an end, because in material life, everything is temporary. Everything's temporal. Yeah. Because, for example, if you love chocolates, mm -hmm. I will give you a whole box of chocolates. How much can you eat? You will come, you will become sick. <laughs> you say, that's it. I don't want to see chocolates anymore. Right. It's a dissatisfaction. This is what happens to us in this material world. We tend to enjoy. And when we enjoy, then it comes to a limit. And you say, that's it. I'm fed up. I'm unhappy again. Because it's not what I want. Because it's material activities. But anything spiritual, because we're spiritual by nature, when we connect spiritual and when we engage in spiritual activities, then we become happy and blissful. So therefore, with these activities, we actually is food for the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, can you explain to me what the makeup? The oh, you mean the tilak? The, yes. Okay, this this clay marking on the forehead is called tilak. Uh, we generally mark the body from the waist from the waist upwards in twelve different uh, places, right? And when we mark the body. We are also chanting the names of the Lord, of Krishna, of the Supreme Personality. Um, just as in, like if I could make a comparison, in Christianity, in Bible it is said that we should, that we should treat the body as the temple of God. Oh, yeah. So, so too we also believe in that, that this body is actually the temple of God. So therefore we mark the body from the waist upwards. It is signifying that this belongs to God mm. and to his spiritual master. Oh, so wow. this body means it should be used in the service of God, mm -hmm. not for our sense gratification, not to exploit the body and not to abuse the body. Yeah. So this markings is actually to denote also that we are following this movement, the Hare Krishna movement. And also is an example, like Shila Prabhupada explains, that uh, when you see a policeman, mm -hmm. he's wearing his police outfit. Therefore, you can understand that yes, he is, he is um, upholding law. Right. So he is a policeman. But if you see that same policeman in a civil, civil uniform, or rather outward, you will take, take him to be a normal citizen. So therefore, like the devotees, we dress in this attire, so we, we actually, others can see that we are devotees, that we are the Hare Krishna devotees and we are following this movement. That's one of the things. And another thing is that it is also, it's, it's a uniform. It's our uniform and it's and it reminds all of us that when you are in the uniform you have to act and behave mm, in that way. In a way that like a policeman is in a police uniform, he has to uphold the law. He right. cannot break the law. Right. So therefore we are in this kind of particular way. Oh that is so beautiful. Okay, well thank you.